Hey guys, so now we're going to talk about the four different types of accelerations you'll see in rotation problems. It can get a little overwhelming because it's a lot of letters, a lot of variables, a lot of equations, um, but I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. Let's check it out. All right, so there are four, as I said, types of acceleration rotation problems. Most of them have two names. So in total, if you look, you have seven different names and you have to know which one, um, how the pairs, which pair of names go together. Okay, centripetal acceleration, AC, uh, also referred to as radial acceleration, A rad. Okay, those are the same thing. Um, tangential acceleration is AT. Um, sometimes this is referred to as linear acceleration. Um, so let me actually add that there. Sometimes you might see this called linear acceleration. Um, the other one is total acceleration, which sometimes is referred to either as total acceleration or just acceleration. Sometimes it's referred to as the total linear acceleration. Okay, so this is just A, it's the total acceleration. Um, and then the last one is rotational or angular acceleration. You're used to this one, this is alpha. I want to point out that these guys are measured in meters per second squared and this is measured in radians per second squared. All these three here, these three are linear accelerations, so they're represented with sort of a straight line, as opposed to alpha, which is an angular acceleration, so it's measured this way. Um, if it's an A, this is AC, A rad, AT, A, right? If it's an A, it's meters per second, um, it's an English letter, so it's meters per second. If it's an alpha, it's a Greek letter, it's in radians, radians per second. That's one way to think about it. Cool? All right, now there's these four types, but depending on what kind of situation you have, you're not gonna have all four types. And what that means is that some of them will just be zero. So first, you always have VT and AC. So if you're going around a circle, got a little object that's going around this circle, let's say this way. Um, at this point, this object has a, has a, um, tangential velocity and it has a centripetal acceleration pointing towards the middle okay um, and it's spinning this way with Omega remember that at this point VT equals R Omega remember also that AC equals V squared over R this is from a while ago and what I can do is I can actually rewrite V as R Omega so let's do that real quick so it's gonna look like this r omega squared over r. Um, the square goes on r and the w, so there's actually two r's and two w's, but one r is going to cancel with the r at the bottom. So it's gonna be like this, r without the square, omega squared. So this is old school, old news, but this is a new version, okay? This is a, a brand new version of writing ac. You can write it in terms of r and w instead of v, okay? These always exist. Um, you always have AC because AC, if you remember from F equals MA, you have AC because you have a FC, a centripetal force. There's a force that pulls you towards the middle, therefore you have a centripetal acceleration. AC is responsible for maintaining the circular path. So AC maintains circular path. Another way to think about this is that it keeps the object spinning. If AC doesn't exist, you can think of it as there's no more, longer a force, no longer a force pulling into the middle, so this object's gonna go straight up um, in this direction, okay? So AC, um, it's there, and it maintains a circular path. So as long as you're moving a circle, you have to have AC, and you have to have VT. Um, so these things always exist. And you have a W because obviously you're spinning. Now. If you're accelerating, okay, if you're accelerating, you are also going to have AT and alpha. The, the converse of that is that if you're not accelerating, these guys are zero, okay? Otherwise, let me put that here. Otherwise, meaning if you're not accelerating, then AT and alpha equal zero. So what does AT look like? The idea is that you're not just spinning in place, but at this point, the object's actually getting faster, right? 
So if this thing is rotating like this, you can think of it that to get faster, you have to like, something has to push the object this way, some force, okay? I'm gonna erase that not to make a mess. So if you push the object this way, it's going to spin faster. So you have an acceleration here, which is a tangential acceleration, okay? And if the object is going faster this way, it's also rotating faster. So there's also an alpha this way. So you got an omega and you got an alpha in that same direction, okay? All right, so you've got these two guys here. Now remember, you always have, you always have your AC. So this sets up an interesting situation where you have an AT this way and an AC this way. They make an angle of 90 degrees with each other right there. Okay, I'm gonna delete that. So what happens is you have two arrows this way, so you can combine the two of them using vector compositions. Pick a different color here. Um, I can make a little triangle here, and this combines using vector composition. And this is what we call the total acceleration, sometimes referred as the total linear acceleration, or sometimes referred simply as acceleration. So if you don't see, if you see just acceleration without the word centripetal, radial, tangential, linear, uh, rotational, angular, right? If you don't see any of these words, you can assume it's just regular acceleration, the total acceleration, which is a combination of these two. It's A by itself, okay? And this is just vector addition. So A is the square root, um, it's the Pythagorean of the two sides. So AT squared plus AC squared, okay? So that's what the total acceleration. So whereas AC maintains your circular path, these guys here are responsible for um, changing angular speed. So these guys, um, AT changes angular speed or velocity, okay? Um, technically it changes angular velocity, so let's write that there. Changes angular velocity. Now changes means it could be going faster or slower, right? All right, uh, two more points, then we're gonna do an example. Um, this equation, ATR alpha, which is one that I gave you earlier, is a good way to remember that AT and alpha are connected, okay? They're linked up together, which is what we see here, okay? Um, you have this and this, or they're both zero. These guys are both not either non-zero together or they're both zero together, okay? And then the last point I wanna uh, make is that if your AT is in fact zero, which by the way, let me delete this, by the way, this would mean that alpha is zero. Just look at this equation right here, right? Then your total A, which is usually the square root of AT squared plus AC squared, simplifies, okay? If your AT is zero, look what happens. You get simply zero plus AC squared, which is the square root of AC squared, which is simply AC. Okay, I'm just pointing that out in case you see that and you don't think it's weird that there's two A's inside of the square root, but one goes away and then your A becomes just your AC. That's totally doable. Uh, in fact, that's what happens here. Here, your A is only AC. So it's like you have these two arrows stacked on top of each other, okay? Let's not draw that there so it doesn't make this more confusing. All right, four accelerations, um, and I gave you two new equations, one new way to rewrite AC, and an equation for um, the total A, all right? So let's do a problem here, it's got five parts, it's kind of annoying, but hopefully you see that it's not that bad. So I have a carousel, um, carousel 10 meters in radius, so big circle, radius equals 10 meters. I know I don't have a lot of space here, but you actually don't need that much room, okay? But let's write small. All right, completes one cycle, one cycle every 75, uh, 45 seconds. So that's the period, T is 45 seconds. I wanna know what is the tangential velocity. Uh, there's a boy that stands at the edge. So if the boy is at the edge, the boy is at a distance, R equals 10. This thing is 10 meters long in radius. 
Um, if you're sitting at the edge, you sit at the 10 meter distance from the center. And I want to know his tangential velocity. So tangential velocity is VT. And remember, the tangential velocity of a point, a person, an object, whatever, um, on a circle, on, a, on a, any kind of spinning object, is R omega, where omega is the omega of the boy, which is the same as the omega of the disk. Okay, so the boy is at a distance 10, but I don't know omega. However, remember, I can get omega from T because omega, frequency, T, and RPM are all interconnected. Omega is 2 pi over T, so 2 pi divided by 45 seconds, and if you do that, you get 0 0.14, and that's what goes here, 0.14, therefore the answer is 1.4 meters per second is the velocity that the boy experiences. For part B, I want to know what is the angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is alpha. Now remember, you only have alpha if you're actually spinning faster. Once it says that it completes one cycle every 45 seconds, right? First 45 seconds, one cycle, second 45 seconds, another cycle, it implies that this is a constant um, it's a constant movement at a constant rate, at a constant velocity. So alpha is actually zero, all right? Radio acceleration is A rad, which is the same as AC, which is V squared over R or R omega, whichever you prefer, okay? So I'm gonna use R omega, um, just so I don't have to square this number, but it's the same exact thing. R is 10 and omega is point, um, I'm sorry, it's r omega, whew, it's r omega squared. I was like, hey, that's the same thing as that. So I'm gonna have to square something either way, um, 0.14 squared. But anyway, if we do this, we get that the answer is 0 0.196 meters per second, okay? I almost used the wrong equation there. Um, either one of these works. Cool. For part D, okay, keeping it tight there, the tangential acceleration is AT. Remember, AT only exists if you're actually pushing this thing to spin faster. Um, another way to think of this is that AT is R alpha and alpha zero, therefore AT equals zero. Okay? So part of the reason why this question doesn't require that much space is because some of the answers are just zero. The total linear acceleration is A, which is the square root of AT squared plus AC squared, and AT is zero, so you're left with the square root of AC, which is just AC, which is the same thing as A rad, which is 0 0.196 meters per second squared. So here's the five answers, this, zero, this, zero, and the total A right here is that. All right, so just a bunch of equations and knowing how to link everything together. Um, it's good to do some practice, make sure you know how to do this. It's pretty straightforward, but it's kind of annoying. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Let me know if you guys have any questions.